Eugene, sorry. Uh, no worries. Oh man, my power cord. Power cord. Okay. No uh, so okay, so you said um, they had the skill within. Um, you had status. T oh, where do we cut off? Yeah. I, I, so I think to make a long story short, I'll give you like two very simple examples. Right. So like most one of the most common problems I see with groups in general, not just organizations, but any kind of group, is they're moving too fast. Right. And some strategic slowdown in certain parts, like doing a retrospective. If you work together and like you you worked hard and everybody wanted to succeed and certain good things happen but certain not so great things happen like at the end of the cycle take the moment to step back and just talk about what you learned together right there are obviously you know a thousand different ways to do a retrospective there's all these like different like you know methodologies and stuff like that but at the end of the day if you're just like taking the time to basically have a conversation and say hey what did we learn what can we do better right you're probably going to do better like um, over time so many people just skip that step mm -hmm. right and if you just started with that hap a lot of this dysfunction wouldn't even happen in the first place mm -hmm. um, another really simple example is listening right so um so i can tell just from this conversation like you're a good listener like you're you know you hear things um i hear you reflect back or refer to them like just through the course of our conversation like i can tell that i am being listened to right um, and there are people out there who are obviously like good at listening and who everyone appreciates as a result of it. And then there are people who are mediocre at it or terrible at it, right? The thing about listening is um, it's so core to being able to collaborate effectively, communication, all this sort of stuff. You can get better at listening if you practice. It's like anything. It's like, yeah. um, right? But you wouldn't go to a, you know, a weekend training to learn how to play the guitar. So why would you go to a weekend training, right, and expect someone to suddenly become good at listening, right? right? I think there's like a lot of these things that people could fundamentally improve on, sort of on their own with a little structure and motivation that would prevent you from needing like an expensive consultant in the first place. And that's really what I want to get to. So how do you help people establish those habits from the start? And how, so what is your approach now? So I've got a couple of things I'm playing with. Um, so, so the base level way that I'm trying to work with organizations is to focus on habit building, right? For habits in particular, and I'm providing like different, like if yeah, if this is something that you guys might be interested, um, I'm I'm just providing coaching and practice for people to develop those habits, right? And so I'll work with groups for a couple of different cycles, and we figure it out based on what the the groups are doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Um, and, uh, and so I've got these four habits I want people to focus on. So lining around success, um, having a retrospective, managing their information well, and actually having team agreements, right? So talking about how they want to work together. And if you do those habits on a regular basis, the hypothesis is that like all that other stuff like is going to start falling into place, right? Or at least you'll have a path to exploring that. So this habits focus is, is one direction. And then the other direction is really focused on uh, this notion of a collaboration practitioner. So um, every group, not every group, but a lot of groups have somebody in the group who's like, it's actually important for us to work together well. And it might not be in your job title, but you start thinking about how could we work together better? What are the changes we want to make? Um, I think oftentimes it's not in the job title, right? I mean, to some extent, like if you're a leader or you're a project manager or whatever, it's it's in your job title already. Um, but I think oftentimes people just care and it's not happening and, mm -hmm. and they take an interest in that. What I really want to do is to support those people in seeing themselves as practitioners, right? Collaboration practitioners and find ways to support them in developing skills. Right, so doing focus training for collaboration practitioners. Uh huh. So who pays? So do you have clients that want this? Yeah. Right now it's like right now it's the practitioner, but. Um, so companies like what? Like uh, is this individuals like small startups or? Like, right now, right now it's individual. Uh -huh. Right now it's. I've experimented with doing some more um, like corporate like sponsored things that they have multiple people doing it with like previous experiments. And I think there's some potential around this right now as well, but I'm 
like in the process of of pivoting those things. So, mm -hmm. um, so individuals and companies like like uh, C level. I mean, their le leadership of companies or individuals I'm, within companies that want to get good at. Yeah, I'm, I'm specifically, yeah, individuals who want to get good at it, and I'm actually specifically, this is a terrible business decision, right, but I'm, I'm specifically like targeting people who are not C-level. When I was a consultant, my clients were all C-level, right, and that makes sense, like you're, you're trying to support people, like they're the ones who are the decision makers, they have all the leverage, they have the budgets and stuff like that, but again, if you care about scale, Right? There are only so many companies with enlightened leadership, right? And really the people who need these kind of skills, skills the most, like the everyday people, like they're the people in the middle, right? Or even in the bottom. Um, and no one is paying any attention to capacity development for those folks. Hmm. So I'm trying to come up with models to, to support those people in, in developing these skills. And I'm just, I'm figuring it out right now. I'm understanding like, what are the, the barriers um, in terms of like, if I'm like, if I'm working at a company, it's a little bit easier because usually there's like developmental budget and that kind of stuff. Hmm. But, you know, if I'm at a startup, right, or if I'm, you know, open source ecology, like what is, you know, what are, what are the barriers? What are the things that support you? So I'm kind of in the research phase right now. Mm -hmm. Can you see, um, okay, say we're doing the three months of summer of extreme design build. 24 yeah. people here, students, so people are paying to come here and get crazy build experiences and education immersion. Yeah. Um, would you see yourself in a, in a participate in that, something like that? Because the thing that, I mean, we obviously appreciate collaboration, it's the number one value, mm. and it's about getting people to work together. Uh, a lot of that is technical skills, but a lot of that is the collaborative literacy part. Yeah. Um, would you be interested in, in like experimenting with anything that where you you could uh, help in that process? Like actually, co uh, if if the focus is build out, like extreme build build outs of infrastructure and building three D printers, building tractors and houses and things like that, would you see um, a role like yours being relevant? Like when when the audience is students, like students probably uh, people who want to. Um, start up small businesses or whatever i think mm. there's gonna be a lot of students probably learning crowd like steam camp style but for more practical purposes uh i don't know what, what are your thoughts on that you're talking about the people who are actually like enrolling in your courses and yeah. doing your programs to try and learn to develop this literacy yeah like would you would you fit in a like so say we need i'd like to have probably like three three or four instructors for that, if you've got 24 students, let's say 24, 30, uh, like three, four instructors, do you think you could um, contribute to that whole process? Like maybe there's one one person who focuses on the collaboration aspect and three people that are more technical or something? And would yeah, you be for interest, sure. Interested in that? Or, I would definitely, definitely be interested in I think um, what I'd want to do is understand a little bit more about who the people are and, and what, what literacy they're already bringing to the table. You know, yeah. trying to design based on that. But yeah, I'd definitely be interested. That would be yeah. really cool. And, and frankly, I mean, I'm just interested, like, you're obviously doing something, right? Yeah. Like, there's, like, you've been able to, I mean, clearly you must have incredible passion for what you're doing because yeah. you're still doing this and it's like, like it's it's important, but it's hard, right? Um, but I'm really curious of what what's going well for you right now and how that comes about. Whether it's more organic or whether you've you know picked up on that and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's uh, you know the thing. Basically, the way I can do it is by living in a mud hut when I got out here, and <laughs> low, low cost existence is key. Yeah, I pretty much had uh, like fifteen thousands of savings and burned that up in one or two years not knowing anything about anything in practice um, mm. and then starting crowdfunding to get like a budget of like a thousand or two thousand a month um, mm. to prototype and kind of live low low key and then got some funding like I was a Shuttleworth Foundation fellow for a couple mm -hmm. of years uh, after the TED talk of course a lot of a lot of interest came in but then we shifted to the the workshops as a way to generate revenue mm. um, but yeah, the the key challenge I would say is, I mean, just the, you know the recognition 
uh, that I joke about about there's kind of one thing as an open source product we <laughs> open source project that we forgot about and that is a product that uh. that part uh, so really focusing on that but it's about a lot about I mean just now just seeing uh, it became crystal clear to me maybe over the last two years that there's nothing to do with like any technical feasibility like the product development like uh. for example the cordless drill uh -huh. thing that we're gonna do next year uh -huh. that thing is gonna succeed so bad it's not uh -huh. gonna be funny <laughs> no uh -huh. I'm very confident about it I mean the numbers like the what I understand about development and like how business works, it's like this will succeed if not this try sometime in the future. But but it's it's really about getting alignment and people to yeah. uh, understand that once again collaborative literacy because it's it's like such a clear case to say okay, uh, just get. So right now we've got two other hardcore guys here. We're developing collaboratively. What we're doing is contributing products open source 3d printable or otherwise manufacturable products to what we call the open source everything store so we're, we're developing this concept where if we could get only like a dozen or a couple of dozen of people who do that then it's like wow your R&D costs are out the startup costs are so much lower you're all sharing experience uh -huh. this whole network of open source production starts but that thing is like you cannot get this across to anybody. It's, it's hard. It's just a hard thing because it's uh, culturally it's a new thing. So that that's what that's the pain point to, to try to communicate any of that outside to the yeah. few few people on the planet that fight. I mean, there's very few that um, get it and actually would join that kind of process. And I thought uh, with the steam camps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're saying, okay, we'll pay you like five or to eight k per event, nine days. Uh, to run this kind of a process, okay, you have to learn the curriculum and stuff. But it's like not even takers for that. And I thought this this was a major ah. shock. It's like now we're actually paying. So it's not like okay, come to OSC and work for free. No, we're actually saying okay, we can pay you. Yeah, we're, we're seeing the economic models work out. We've proved pretty much proven out that the steam camps can generate revenue and kind of have a pretty good idea of how to do that. Yeah. It's like still uh, building up a team. We've got maybe like five or six people that are now going to do it. But it took me, like after like two months of intense looking for people. No, I did not get people like flooding me. It's like still yeah. very few takers. And it's like, uh -huh. wow, that's a further thing. It's like, what's what's the issue here? And, and I think a lot of it is with this, the, the, the idea of true open collaborative sharing that you're becoming vulnerable like okay what you're actually telling me to open fully open source and give my product away like that's actually a big shock so mm. uh, I think that cultural bit even in a, the fab lab community like for example fab lab does not pay attention to license they they encourage open source but most of they their stuff is like yeah a lot of their stuff mm. is NC or whatever like don't require it. Um, so I'm, I think I'm seeing some of that there too that's like okay when it comes down to let's get vulnerable and let's actually think about a much bigger plan for humanity it's like people don't think that way so um, definitely culturally an uphill battle uh -huh. so exploring those issues how it works I think I got a lot of insight through just lately just trying to organize the steam camps and it's like not really finding all the instructors that I thought would be just flooding at this point uh -huh. Uh, I mean, like 200 decent candidates, five that are actually going forward or so, um, yeah. something like something like that. Like it's a very very small percentage. So still looking, and it's like it's gonna work, but it's like just just looking for different approaches to take here and how we can yeah. address it. Like I mean, I'd love to ask you, like, okay, if we've got this project of the Steam Camp uh, happening, there's a curriculum. It's uh, it's what we think really good, really decent decent content and we've got the crazy modular building techniques and rapid build techniques that we use and uh, we do have some some substance um, how do we find the people so it's, it's kind of like a strategy question and it's um, kind of trying to deal with that strategy of how do you develop this business that we're intending to run um, like yeah in January so we're looking like for right now for example I've got a gig getting lined up for Hong Kong they're gonna get me to do their steam camp there. So it's a friend a Ted fellow friend that's that came through with that uh -huh. that's a recent thing there's gonna be like 24 students pretty much we've got a captive audience there like 24 students they're gonna pay me they're gonna pay the tuition for that and all that nice. um, 
that's a good one. January, we're looking at doing, like the three of us here at least, um, events in three different cities to so get that team building. But we're, we're aiming to do like 12 to 24. We're not mm -hmm. there yet. We're recruiting uh, an event planner to actually try mm -hmm. to get that happening, uh, to do all the steps to, to make that happen. But th that's kind of where we are. We're, uh, but I don't know if we could use your help somehow in helping to pull this together. Like maybe I can pass on more info on the Steam Camps, like exactly what we're doing with that in the curriculum. And if you have insight on how to make it happen, because uh, that, that's, that's a big thing for us as a revenue generator right now. On top of the, we're, we're starting to produce products that will probably start an Etsy and Amazon store, things like that, and also sell on our website and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so there's business development, like that, that's where we're at. Yeah, that sounds good. Why don't I um, why don't I start with what you have? The beauty of your model is I can actually read like a lot of what you're working on already, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. so start with like what you're thinking about, what you've planned on, and stuff like that, and just you know watch the video you sent me. Yeah. Um, and then maybe uh, touch base with you sometime next week, and maybe you'll have a couple ideas. Maybe not. You know, just uh, can can just ping you, and we can kind of keep exploring and if, yeah. if new ideas come up for you based on our conversation then you know you can yeah. pick me as well that would be great so email is the best way to catch a hold of you you're pretty right uh, e on that. email and phone phone's okay. good uh, did, did I give you my phone, phone number I don't think so uh, okay I get it I'll email, 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 email you the phone number yeah because we're in the public eye <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no that's great that's great I'm really glad to have touched base with you that's awesome yeah uh, yeah, yeah I like it hey I, it's, I'm excited about what you're doing. I mean, I, I just, it's, I so appreciate it. I appreciate the epic. Yeah. Even little touches like noticing like your, your signature and your oh. email and like the commitment to transparency, you know, like, like yeah, really yeah, appreciate no. that. I appreciate yeah. you appreciating that. Yeah, very few people appreciate that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's the culture we're in. Uh, yeah, yeah, so let me yeah. let me send you. I'll send you just like the nutshell of what what we're up to with the Steam Camp and stuff like that. So maybe you can read that and see if we can touch base next week or such. So yeah, that sounds great. Good. Okay, that sounds great. I'll look forward to it. All right, Eugene. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right. Yeah. Likewise. Stay warm. Take okay. care. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. Bye bye.